came to pass many, many years ago when the world was a very, very different place. I am Osas Igadaro, and this is the Maroki of Zazao. The Emir of Zazao had two daughters who were known throughout his emirate for their beauty. The oldest was betrothed to marry the son of the Emir of Kano, though the two had never met. The palace was buzzing with excitement on the day of the introduction. The drummers were drumming and the kakaki were blowing. Excitement rippled throughout the palace as the Emir of Kano and his entourage approached the city of Zazao. They were welcomed and immediately the festivities began. Later that evening, in the great hall at the palace, the guests had all been fed and were satisfied. It was the final moment everyone was waiting for, the moment of the introduction. The kakaki sounded once more, and the Prince of Kano stood up, waited anxiously to at last set his eyes on his bride-to-be. The drummers started again, while in the far left corner, a door opened, and some 30 young women danced into the hall in a breathtaking procession. Each of the women was fine looking, but there was one especially that caught the prince's eye. She, he thought to himself, she must be my fiance. It was for him love at first sight. The prince followed her every step the girl took. She was truly beautiful. The drumming stopped and the master of ceremonies bellowed out, who is the prince that wishes to wed our maiden? It is I, responded the prince, standing up for all to see. Whispers of approval were heard as he did so. And who is the maiden that has been promised to the prince? He said again. It is I, came a voice. The prince was surprised. The voice did not come from the girl he had been looking at, but another instead. You cannot choose who to marry, said the emir of Kano to his son kind-heartedly. Father, is this marriage not a marriage to ensure peace between the people of Kano and the people of Zazao? He inquired. It is, replied the emir. Well, continued the prince, I have asked, and the girl I saw and fell in love with is also a princess of the lands, just as her sister, the one you would have me marry. If I marry the girl I saw, the purpose of the union, peace between two emirates, is still accomplished. While I marry for love and not for need's sake, the emir and his advisors understood, and before long, it was agreed by the emirate councils of Zazao and Kano that the Prince of Kano would marry the second daughter of the Emir of Zazao. The wedding date was set for a month hence. Ah, oh, you may be right in thinking all was well and that our story might end here, but all was not well or how it should be. As the arrangements for the wedding were in full swing, there was one who had been embarrassed, who was sad, who was bitterly jealous and filled with rage. Miriam was resentfully disappointed at what had happened. She was the older of the emir of Zazao's daughters. It was her that had been promised, her that was supposed to be marrying the prince after all. She too was a princess and as beautiful as her younger sister Amina. Miriam was driven blind by her jealousy, 
So much so that she didn't stop to think about the facts, about what had actually happened. It was not that Amina had chosen the prince, more that the prince had chosen Amina. After the introduction had turned into a nightmare for her and half mad with envy, Miriam spent days in her room in the palace, alone, plotting her revenge. One morning, Miriam went to see Amina in her room. Amina, she said gently, I have come to ask for your forgiveness. It is true that I was upset by the turn of events at the introductions. I have spent many hours thinking of all that happened and I now know that things are as they are. I wish no ill, only joy and happiness. This said, the two girls hugged each other. Miriam continued. It is a lovely day. Let us go for a walk by the river till we reach the great waterfall, just as we used to do. Amina was overjoyed that her sister had put aside her resentment and agreed immediately. They walked along the river to the great waterfall. Anyone that saw them would have thought neither had a care in the world. They would have been very wrong. Suddenly, and without warning, Miriam pushed Amina in the fast-flowing river. Miriam, why? pleaded Amina. You took the man I was to marry away from me. Not so, managed Amina between breaths. The river was pulling her under and straight to the edge of the fall. Please help me, sister. Miriam, please. That was the last she said as the waterfall embraced her. The evening back at the palace, Miriam spread a rumor that Amina must have run away rather than marry the prince. Everyone believed her. Later that day and far downstream, fishermen from a small village found the now lifeless body of Amina and pulled her from the river. Passing by at the time was a wandering minstrel known as a Maruki who watched as the fisherman drew Amina from the river. He was immediately struck by her loveliness and a great sadness filled his heart. He chose not to stop, but he saw her beauty and could not forget. He traveled far for many months till one day his travels brought him back to the village. That beautiful girl, so tragically lost by the river, he reminded the fisherman of the incident. Buried under the tree over there, said one of them, sadly shaking his head with his eyes cast down as if the incident had taken place just the day before. Not some few months passed. The Maroki walked to the tree underneath which, in the tree's shadow, he said a silent prayer for the girl. A gentle breeze rustled through the leaves. Strange, the Maroki thought to himself, as there was no wind and every other tree in the area was still. Then he heard a soft, dreamy voice. Take wood from the tree to make your kantigi. Shape it well, that it may sound like me. Unsure of what was happening, and almost as if it was a daydream, 
he did just that. Carefully shaping the Kantigi, as the mysterious voice had told him. After some hours, and well into the night, he was finally satisfied with his work. The Kantigi is like a one-stringed guitar. It was ready. Early the next morning, he made his way to the palace of the Amir of Zazal. It happened by chance that there was a wedding ceremony taking place that day. So he knew his services as a Maroki would be needed. Sure enough, later in the evening, he was called to the great hall. Asked to sit in the middle of the hall, the Maroki played his old kantigi and placed the one he had just made on the seat beside him in order that he should play it later. Everyone in the great hall sat captivated as he sang his songs, praising the emirs of Kano and Zazao, and approving the wedding of the prince of Kano and Miriam, his new wife. When a strange thing happened. The kantigi that he had made the day before and shaped so carefully as the mysterious voice had asked him to, began playing by itself. You could see the shock on the faces of the wedding guests, but none was more surprised than the Maroki himself. Everyone fell silent. The Kantigi now started to sing with the most melodious voice they had ever heard. There sits my father, the Amir, and there my mother, his wife. There sits the prince, my intended prince, and there Miriam, my sister, who took my life. Well, a whisper went through the great hall. Miriam did what? That was Amina's voice. The Kantiki sang by itself. This was just too much for Miriam to take. Frightened out of her wits, she stood up and ran screaming from the hall. It is said that from that day, Miriam never regained her senses, that she remained quite mad for the rest of her life. And the moral of the story is this. The jealous often bring a curse upon their own head.